In this video, we'll take you on a swim alongside majestic manta rays. Witness the fiery spectacle of an active volcano. Zip line over waterfalls and race through forests. Soar through the skies in an epic helicopter tour. Finally view the Milky Way galaxy from the summit of Mauna Kea. Welcome to the island of Hawaii, where it's just adventure, adventure, and just more adventure. After that epic four days in Maui, it was time to head to Big Island. So if you haven't watched our Maui video, do check it out. I'll make sure to link it. Uh, but now it's time for our next adventure, which is the Big Island or Island of Hawaii, as it's called. Even before we landed, we were blown away by the landscape. We saw these huge black lava fields that had solidified. Then suddenly, there was the ocean. And then, lush tropical forests. It was a truly intriguing place, even from the air. And we are now in the Big Island Airport. I have never seen such an open airport. It's really a different experience to be here. Today we are going to be going for the manta ray snorkeling in night. I don't know how the experience is going to be. I'm really nervously excited to get into the water at like 9 o'clock in the night in the dark. Let's go. There are two main sites to the Big Island. Kona, the more popular site with the airport and most activities. And Hilo, the volcano site where you can stay close to the action. We decided to stay near the volcano because, well, why not? But before heading there, we had some Kona side activities on our list. You're in Big Island, so why not start with adventure? And we started our first activity in Big Island with manta ray snorkeling. And the kicker is you've got to do it in the middle of the night. So it's not during the daytime. How are you feeling? Very scared. <laughs> We're going snorkeling again as if one time wasn't enough. Yes. <laughs> to get panicky all over again. Let's see. An epic experience we'll never forget. But we weren't sure after Maui's yes. snorkeling experience the previous day. But we can, we'll figure it out. So yeah. we're all in this together. Our guide and captain were amazing. They reassured us that if we didn't feel comfortable, we could just sit and watch. We hopped into a small boat and headed out into the darkness. Are you ready? I'm very scared. <laughs> the only light came from the moon and it was little nerve-wracking but also thrilling. Once we reached the spot, we held on to a board with lights, attracting the phytoplankton that the manta rays love to eat. And then the magic happened. These giant graceful creatures swam right up to us, brushing against us with their bodies. It was an incredible experience that we'll never forget. The manta rays put on a spectacular show. I don't even know how long we were out in the sea, like I lost track of time after a point. But I think we were there for about an hour to hour and a half. Once we came back to the harbour safely, uh, it was time for our drive back to our Airbnb, which was almost two to two and a half hours away. Uh, but it was a really nice time with the moon shining on us. But with the dawn breaking in, we were already excited for our next day's adventure. Imagine stepping into a scene straight out of Jurassic Park. This is Uma Uma Experience, a hidden gem where nature's beauty meets thrilling activities. Today is day two of uh, Big Island Adventure and we have uh, two fun activities planned, ATV and the zip line. We are here with Uma Uma Experience. They have a beautiful property at the edge of a cliff overlooking the Pacific Ocean. They have two options for zip line. You can do it nine times or four times. And it goes over through amazing forests, waterfalls, and you can see the Pacific Ocean in front of you. So I think we are in for a thrill here. We started with an ATV ride through the hills, enjoying the beautiful scenery and learning about the history of the island. Then it was time for the highlight of the trip, the zip line. Imagine soaring through the air, the wind whipping past you, the ocean shimmering below. 
We even got a zip side by side. We had a blast zip lining through the lush forest at Uma Uma Falls. The scenery was stunning and it was a thrill to zip past the waterfalls and out over the ocean. The final zip line dropped us off right where we could grab a coffee and watch others take on the course. We also loved the relaxed vibe at Uma Uma. They had a great cafe with a view of the zip lines where you can grab a coffee and watch the other adventurers. And once we did that, we headed back to our Airbnb which is nestled very close to the Volcanoes National Park. Just imagine just being in the middle of a jungle and being at like a walking distance to the volcano. Our Airbnb near Volcanoes National Park was nestled in a magical jungle location, just a short walk from the volcano. You could smell the sulfur in the air and we knew we were in for something special. The next day was all about the volcano. Hiking to the volcano before sunrise. Hey Neha. Hello. How are you feeling? I'm feeling very scared. We're going for the volcano eruption viewing. It's five o'clock in the morning. In pitch dark. Pitch dark. And we actually arrived here at... 4 a.m. But it was too dark and then we decided to wait out a little bit. Yeah. We're adventurous but... Not that much. <laughs> <laughs> Not go. that adventurous. So we waited in the car for 30 minutes and then we saw a few people come and that's when we decided to go for the trail. Uh, we were unsure because uh, there has been uh, some active eruptions. Act eruptions in the past few days. So we just wanted to be sure like we have a company and the trail is actually open. So yeah. Let's go and see. Yeah. So I'm going to switch off the camera and we're going to turn it on once we reach the overlook. It was a bit of a trek in the dark, but it was totally worth it. We followed the locals and directions and eventually reached the crater rim. We were greeted by the most incredible sight, the volcano erupting spewing flames and lava into the sky. It was a humbling experience to witness the raw power of nature. So the Big Island has two sides, the west side and the east side. The west side is the more popular side, uh, Kona. It has a lot of resorts, uh, touristy stuff, you know, all the activities. But the Hilo side is the less explored, uh, more adventurous side, which is also where the Volcano National Park is located. So we are going to be doing uh, a full day exploration on the Hilo side. We're going to be stopping at around 10 places and uh, we'll show you around the Big Island from a different perspective. So this is our stop one, which is the Black Sand Beach. Through the volcanic eruptions over so many years, the sand here is now like completely black, mixed with the lava. This is really something very different from what I've ever seen. If you look at it closely, you can see the waves dance to the rhythm. As a traveler, views like this, moments like this, and the feeling of having witnessed something special freeze in your memory forever. Dama, let's go. Scatter this one. Bank ki kanno meedan keltar gada. Allah unno. We made a stop at the Waipo Valley Lookout, a stunning spot with panoramic views of the lush mountains. We had lunch there, lost in the beauty of the landscape and wondering about the creatures that called it home. The views here are straight out of a storybook. You'll be so mesmerized by them that you want to stand there all day and look at the never-ending cliffs in the distance. And as you look down, you see the ocean greeting the black sand. And as you look straight, you can't believe the beauty of this place. It's something I'll never forget.
The next stop on our list is Rainbow Falls. The falls live up to their name, producing vibrant rainbows in the mist they create, especially in the mid to late morning on sunny days. While rainbows can form around waterfalls, they aren't always reliable. Rainbow Falls is known for its consistency. And finally, we are headed to the lava caves. Magma or the molten lava used to flow from here and created all these cave formations. And we're just gonna go explore some lava caves. The steps to the cave are very steep. This is a collapsed section of the cave through which you can enter. As you look up, you can see the entrance to the caves. It's straight out of the jungle book. Lava used to flow in these caves as recently as 100 years ago. And as you go inside, you see the destruction the flowing lava leaves in its path. Our next stop is also a lava cave, but the trail's ending is truly special. First, you must walk through a lava tube for few minutes. It then opens to a beautiful outdoor forest trail in the Hawaii Volcanoes National Park. The trail is slightly different from the one we did in the morning. It takes you to the mountain's peak. So, we started our trek with some funny reverse video footage. The trail is family friendly and very well maintained. It opens to a view of steam rising from under the ground. And as you go closer, you realize it's the volcano vaporizing the Pacific Ocean. And if you listen closely, you will hear a hissing sound. There are also many signboards along the way. They caution you and also tell you about the cultural importance of the place. The trail up the mountain is nothing short of a dream sequence and every frame is straight out of an adventure novel. When you reach the top, you're shocked by the sheer power of the volcano. When you turn to the right, you'll see an isolated building on the volcano's edge. It's the visitor center. They serve fantastic food, which you can enjoy with the most unique view in the world. It's truly a magical place. And if you look down, you'll see the trail we did early in the morning and get the sense of how high we are standing. We had no other plans for the rest of the day, so we spent some time driving around the dry lava fields, catching up on some ocean views. My favorite part of the day was the drive through the lava fields with the glow from the sun setting in the distance. The feeling is indescribable. So we are in the Na Volcano National Park for the third time in two days. In one day actually. So we came early in the morning, saw the lava just before the sunrise. Then we came in the afternoon, checked out all the trails. And now we are back again here at uh, 8 o'clock in the night in pitch dark to check out lava again in darkness. I think it's going to be like really epic uh, because the volcano is active. So let's go. We have to walk this way for about... One thing, one more thing. Yeah. I'm going to wake you up tomorrow at... No. Two, three in the morning. No, I'm done. Like three <laughs> times in a day. Three times the charm. So, <laughs> let's get going. So, we are hiking a mile to go look at the lava in pitch dark. And these are the things Amit makes me do. This is how dark it gets. Oh my God. Like, it's literally pitch dark. You can see the cracks on the road here. It's not a normal crack. It's from the earth caving in near the crater. And the most adventurous part about this is that the earth can cave in at any moment. Anywhere. <laughs> Anywhere, at any time. A crater can sprout open here. Especially because the volcano is active right exactly. now. Yeah. So the molten lava will be flowing below from where we are walking. Anything can happen anywhere, anytime. Yeah. We are at the same spot we were in the afternoon and the lava glow is clearly visible. We are watching from a distance but the actual vent or the opening of the volcano is as wide as a football field. So with that in mind, we headed back to our Airbnb, called it a night and then we were all all set to look at the craters from the sky. And today we headed to the Hilo airport where we were going to do a scenic helicopter ride of all the craters, the volcanoes and the entire Hilo area. 
So we started our tour with a quick safety briefing by the crew. Then the crew told us to walk towards our helicopter, which was ready and waiting for us on the tarmac. We were seated in the helicopter with the seat belts tightened around us. The anticipation of touring the volcano from the air went up a notch as the pilot turned on the engines and we waited for the green signal from air traffic control. Personally, my favorite part of the tour was the takeoff. So here is the first person view of the adventure for you to join us. We soon encountered some rain clouds along the way and it was nothing short of magical. Soon enough, we were on top of Hilo where most of the population resides. And within 10 minutes, we were over burnt landscapes. It tells you how close the houses are. On tour, you encounter many volcanoes, some a few hundred years old with barren landscapes around them and a few others that are thousand years old with vegetation and life taking their course. Soon enough, the active volcano was in our sights, spewing smoke in the distance. As we got closer, my heart started beating fast since I could see the smoke of the volcano going underneath us and we were flying over the largest volcano on Earth. But our pilot made sure to crack jokes and keep us engaged the whole time. He also made sure that we got some really cool shots of the volcano. As for Amit, he mentioned his favorite part of the tour was the awesome jokes and the skills of our pilot. At the end of the trip, the pilot surprised us with an extended route over the ocean on our way back to the airport. Blue Hawaiian Tours, you won our hearts that day. Time for our last activity in Big Island. Uh, I cannot believe we've already reached the end. I wish we could stay longer. But the most epicest activity, if that's the word, is yet to come so we started our drive we are now driving to the summit of Mauna Kea, the highest volcano on big island at 14,000 feet above sea level it is also called the sleeping giant Mauna Kea last erupted for 6,000 years ago which is very small on a volcanic time scale so it has the potential to wake up again someday the base of the mountain is 20,000 feet under the ocean and only the remaining 14,000 feet surfaces out of the sea, making it taller than Everest if you measure it from the base. It's steep drive that takes you from the sea level to 14,000 feet in one hour. And pretty soon you're driving through the clouds. Mauna Kea essentially means White Mountain. It's uh, called a White Mountain because it's the only place in Hawaii where it actually snows in winter. So people actually do snowboarding uh, and skiing on top of this mountain. I'm going to be talking about three things, the history, the culture and the science. So if you see all these uh, pyramid shaped, cone shaped mountains, they're actually burial sites. And the native Polynesian tribes have been transporting the material up the mountain for centuries. Culturally, the tribes believe the shadow of the giant stretching across the ocean protects them from evil. The scientific significance of this place, there are observatories from 19 countries here. It plays a very important role in the technological advancement of humanity. Uh, the Smithsonian Observatory, which was the key observatory in the discovery of black hole, is actually based on this mountain. Let's enjoy some sunset views from here. It is said Mauna Kea has one of the most beautiful sunsets on the planet. It has some of the cleanest, driest and darkest skies in the world which make it an ideal location for sunrise and sunsets. But the real magic happens as the sun goes below the horizon. That's a wrap on our epic adventure through the Big Island. Remember that life is all about exploring the unknown, trying out new places and soaking up the beauty of this planet. Thank you so much for joining us. Until next time, stay curious and keep that sense of adventure alive.